Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics. And today, I'm gonna to go over the most misunderstood and single most important part of your aircraft setup. I've covered it before in different ways, but today I'm gonna to just focus entirely on this, and I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, this is my AMR. Every single surface is gonna be set up exactly the same way. Um, what we're talking about is the difference between travel and rates and helping to understand where they both fit in. As I've said many times before, this is the travel. That is as far as this thing will go to reach its physical limits. This has to be established with every aircraft. The only notable exception is possibly for a jet or something like that that in order to really increase the, the torque of the servo, you might not want it to reach its full deflection for one reason or another. But for the most part, we're going to try and get the most out of, of each surface. Most of the aircraft that I've flown over the years that uh, flew terribly were instantly attributable to this particular issue that it's not set up properly. They think because it's uh, uh, 3D, they want to set the rates at 150% because they want it at max. Well, that number isn't max. That number um, is the max travel of the servo. But depending on where the servo arm is and depending on where uh, the geometry lies and, and just how much throw is available, that could be the kiss of death. You could be making your plane uh, uh, impossibly difficult to control, which I have definitely seen. The way we actually set up the travel, and remember, this has nothing to do with the rates, not high rates, low rates, nothing. This is just establishing how far the servo will go. Um, we're going to deflect it all the way, uh, select it on here, and now um, we're going to move the slider to establish what is max. And I'm going to go all the way up. Right now, I'm at 142, it's pegged. Now I'm gonna back off until it just starts to move a little bit, which is right there. So I have established, uh, whoops, there we go. We're right at 137, that's where we are for max travel. Now, when we go to the other side, uh, that's just a byproduct of uh, digital servos, if you're wondering why it's chattering. Uh, when I go to the other side, there's now two considerations. We're going to see which one, um, if, if we want to uh, kind of adjust this with a gauge to make sure that both surfaces are going the same amount, on one side we might not be going exactly to max. So in this case I'm just going to, um, uh, I've already got it set to what is max, which in this case is 128. So it's 137 on one side, 128 on the other. When I, somebody hands me their radio and I check this, if these numbers are identical, like 125 or 100 or something like that, I already know it's set up improperly. I already know it's wrong. So if you want your plane to fly to, to its potential, you should number one set it, if it's 45 degrees up, it should be 45 degrees down to make sure that everything happens in a very axial way. So it's even on both sides. And the other thing is to make sure you establish this. Okay, now we are on rates. In this case, um, for my uh, top setting, I have 100%. Because when I'm flying 3D and flying low and slow, that much travel is necessary. Okay? Um, now, when I go to a middle rate, that means max travel is only 23%. But remember, my travel is set the way it is. This is just the rate that I want to use on this particular switch. All right, we're in the travel adjusts again. Now, one of the reasons this is so critical is that if the uh, rate itself um, is down below 100%, that means it's deflecting completely with, um, with the servo only traveling, you know, maybe 80% of what it's capable of traveling. 
Anyway, you have to look at it like the gears on a bicycle. Um, you know, if you're in first gear, your small, uh, smaller gear on the front, uh, you can turn it very easily and it'll get you up a very steep hill. And with the servos, it, it's kind of the same thing. You have a lot more resolution, a lot more torque. So a servo that has 130 ounces of torque, um, if you have the servo set at 50% and it moves the surface max, you're taking that 130 ounces of torque and maybe reducing it to only 70 ounces. So it's not as strong and you'll have blowback. And the biggest... Okay, here's a really simple graphic that I did showing that the way the servo works is just like a lever. So obviously on one side, we only need 10 ounces of force on the servo uh, to be able to, to lift and move 100 ounces of weight. And conversely, if you have this set wrong, you would need 100 ounces of weight to lift something that's only 10 ounces on the other side. This kind of shows you the basic efficiency, which is what we're really looking for. We want the servo to be as efficient as possible. And what I'm kind of showing here is the fact that uh, when you are kind of getting extra uh, leverage, you have to move the servo a little further. And if you look at this graphic again, you will see that basically, if you have it set up wrong, that if you only move the uh, one side only one inch and the result is six inches of travel, you can see how the resolution would be terrible that the surface would move so far with so little input that it would be very difficult to handle, especially since some of the large surfaces will uh, impact the plane's uh, trajectory quite a lot. If I have the long end of this rod over the, uh, over the edge of the fulcrum here, and if I have to put force on this side, Basically, I only moved down here very little, but the other end, look, look how high it goes up. So with very little movement over here, and the closer I get to here, the further this goes with less movement here. So on the short side, if I only move, let's say half an inch, the long side will travel roughly three or four inches. And that is very disadvantageous when it comes to resolution. Conversely, if I'm on this side where I'm on the long end and this end is the part moving the surface up and down, um, I have a lot of resolution. The servo can travel quite a distance and only move the, the servo just a little bit and that makes you very, very smooth. And also it gives me a lot more torque. In other words, uh, very little force over here could generate a lot of force uh, to stabilize the surface or to uh, deflect it under great pressure. What we've done here is we've drilled multiple holes on each of these, uh, the servo arm and the control horn, to show you how much the surface moves when you, uh, when you uh, attach it in each of the different holes. So what we're gonna do now is we, we have it on the top hole of the servo arm, top hole of the control horn, and when I move the servo to its max travel, as you can see, I can't reach the end of the surface's uh, physical limits, okay? Now, if I move this to the other extreme, which is over here, when I move the servo arm to its max, the servo to its max travel, look what I've done. I've overdriven its max physical limits. And that's a big problem for a couple of reasons. Reason number one is you are binding the servo and you can burn your servo up. Reason number two, you lose resolution. And resolution will explain a little later. Um, and you're also losing torque. That means 100 ounce torque may only give you 75 ounces because it just doesn't have the, uh, uh, the resolution. Now, if I put this right in the middle, it's perfect. What's gonna happen is when I move this to its physical limits, that's gonna be at its physical limits. That means it is as far as the servo can travel and then the surface travels as far as it's supposed to. That means the relationship with the stick and the airplane 
is going to be 100% of its max travel from center to the end. And that's what we're looking for. You can accomplish it in different ways. Obviously, you can move this down here. That means the servo arm itself is not going to travel as far. And you can move it to the lowest horn on here. And that will accomplish basically the same goal. As you can see, we're pretty much at the same spot. You want all the throw you can out of a 3D airplane because you need uh, 45 degrees of throw in the elevator most of the time, at least. And the biggest part is you lack resolution, which means, you know, the surface is traveling so far from a very small movement of the stick. And that's what makes these things fly terribly uh, when it's set up so wrong. So ideally, we wanna have the travel set somewhere between 100 and maybe 10 to 145. If you're at 150 and it's still not traveling far enough, then you're losing some capability. But if you make the opposite mistake, you're getting terrible performance out of the servo and the lack of res resolution means that every bit of your flying is going to be very choppy and the plane is going to uh, react violently rather than smoothly. So to keep your flying smooth, um, the, the, the uh, geometry and the, uh, the, the travel just have to be set right and make sure you have uh, enough expo to make sure you stay smooth. Okay, this is going to demonstrate exactly why it is so easy for people to do things wrong when they're setting up an airplane. This is an erratics that came right from the factory and he, it was set up as he told me that it was uh, recommended, which is on the end of there. And he's trying to get max throw out of it, which he's achieved. The only problem is that when he set it up with max throw, it actually reached 100% um, of the uh, flight surface's potential. At When I look at this, oh, it's flickering, uh, only 62%. So his travel adjust, in order to set it to where it reached max throw, he was only using 62% of the available travel of the servo itself, which means his resolution was terrible. And not only was the resolution terrible, but the, the, the torque is reduced by a tremendous amount. Um, it's, it's like using a lever in reverse. Uh, you have to put a lot of pressure in uh, to, to get very little torque. Now, the thing is, all we have to do to alleviate this problem is move this in on the servo arm until he gets full throw at 120, maybe 130 uh, percent on his travel adjusts. And then he'll have good resolution and he'll have really good uh, torque. When I discuss resolution, what I mean is right now this servo, when it moves, um, as you can see, maybe a quarter of an inch. On the other end, the flight control is moving a full inch. And, you know, it's like trying to ride your bike uphill, you know, um, in 10th gear it, it just it takes so much more strength but you know that works really well if you are going at high speeds but the thing is in order to use this effectively these servos need one thing and that is strength uh, a good fast servo is fine but what it really needs is strength and if you have this reverse lever effect that you only move it a little bit and it moves the surface a lot you have very, very low resolution and at the very least will require a ridiculous amount of expo to feel anything normal at uh, just straight and level flight. This was the final travel on the aileron to make it work. He obviously had it set at 100%. So when he test flew it, the thing felt very uncomfortable because it was obviously way too sensitive. Okay, on the erratics, as he has it set up on the end, points on each of the servos were at 56, 62, 93, 53, and 75 and 80. 
on all of the surfaces. So this thing's gonna basically fly like crap for him. I guess because it has a gyro, it might keep it stable, but this will not do what this plane is supposed to do, I don't think. Another problem we had with this is that, coincidentally, this, it was a little difficult to get any up elevator because it's, it's kind of tight. In fact, it's extremely tight. Down elevator, no problem. So what was happening is because uh, it was set on the highest uh, point on that very long servo arm, it just didn't have enough torque to pull it. If you see now on the elevator, we have 100% throw. With this at the end, the servo did not have enough strength to pull this up above there. Now we have all of this. Uh, we actually loosened the uh, the, the hinge line a, a, a bit as well. You know, just kept deflecting it back and forth. That helped a little bit. But now the servo is strong enough to do it. But if we go down and look, we're still only at ninety uh, at eighty eight percent on the up elevator. So we're gonna. We're going to move the servo in even more. Okay, here is where we've arrived. None of them except the elevator is at 100 on one section, and we've moved it all the way to there. Um, we've got the ailerons all the way in, and the, uh, the travel is only 82 and 83 percent, respectively. Uh, rudder, 81 and 80 which means we're just not maximizing the torque of the servo. Maybe it won't need it, but the rudder is starting to have a little bend and we're afraid it's gonna start binding. So we're gonna kind of leave it there and see how it flies. But ultimately we would want the um, travels over 100%. Um, I'm not sure why they opted to do it this way. There's a lot of ways to, to do this better, um, but, um, Again, I, it, I'm absolutely clueless why they didn't allow for 100% servo travel.